I saw that. It's kind of squishy. Good morning, everyone. We are in my pickup today, which I feel like it's been a while since that happened. We have some serious problems we need to work out today, and you guys are coming along with us. Cultivator is in the yard getting greased, getting a once over before it heads back out to the field. Also, since the tractor is here and the fuel trailer is right here, we're just gonna go ahead and top off the fuel. I always put this little cap in my pocket thinking, I can't forget it if it's in my pocket, right? And then I go and do laundry and I probably find one of those little tire caps in every load of laundry that I do, it's ridiculous. These little Milwaukee um, portable inflators are super cool. Just tightens right on like that. You know, here, I'm just gonna go, let's put them, um, start with that. bigger problems than a low tire on Grant's four-wheeler. We have a flat tire on that sucker. This pivot is incredibly more important than Grant's four-wheeler, so I did get it aired up, but now it's time to fix this thing so we can get it moving. We're going to be cultivating this field. Right now, the pivot is directly in the way. It is blocking most of the rows that we need to get to. So before we can move it, we need to fix the tire. I mean, get it running and out of the way and bring the tractor. And we need to get this done quickly because the corn is getting really tall. And if the corn gets too tall, when the tractor drives over it, it will break off. And so it's kind of like a uh, do it today or it won't get done at all. So we need to get this tire change, get the pivot moving so we can get out there and cultivate this corn. I know this sounds kind of silly, but you can almost watch corn grow. It goes really fast, especially when you have hot days like today is. The sun is shining. There's hardly any clouds in the sky. The corn will visibly grow from right now to tonight. So it's like a serious time crunch. It's ridiculous. And I know this corn doesn't look all that tall out here, but it's because we don't water this portion of the field. You can see the pivot stops right there because it runs into the road over there. And so this stuff has not been irrigated, but this stuff over here has been. And you can just tell immediately where it gets watered and where it doesn't. Look at this. This was our first planted field. This is the first field that Grant and I came out with the big tire tractor and the planter that we worked all winter on upgrading. The corn actually grew. It's tall. <laughs> it's and tall, yeah. On a hot day like this, you can just snap these corn plants off. Very easy. So we just gotta Hey! Hey! Hey, hey. it's for educational purposes here. You killed them! That's why we gotta get out here today. We gotta be quick. We got stuff to do. Alright everyone. Friendly reminder that these things are really dangerous. But really handy. But really handy. Oops. That's why I'm standing over here. Literally lifting up an entire pivot here, guys. You think we can get them to honk at us? Let's go try. Is there a person in each of those engines? I don't know. Who knows about trains? We know nothing about trains. We see a lot of them though. I would love to go for a ride in a train. Can someone hook us up with that? I want to ride on one of those pickups that has the tracks for the oh, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the pickup that can drive on the All train right, tracks? You take the pickup, I'm gonna drive the train. All right, sounds good. We'll race ya. All right, back to work. Enough screwing around. While I am never thankful about a flat tire, is what it looks like, I am grateful that it happened now before the, before the corn got too much taller and pivot is deeper. 
decently close to the road so that we can get to it. Grant and I have changed a, a lot. <laughs> Grant and I. Never mind. Grant and I have changed a lot of pivot tires together. So we kind of have a system and we have it down to pretty much a science. We can get them done pretty fast. The corn. Careful there. Those are my babies. Yeah, there we go. Down the row. Down the row. A little bit further to go. Train cars are holding corn. You can tell by the bottom, it's a hopper. It's not like a, the pool ones are totally different. They're open on the top. So these are coming from a grain elevator and they're hauling it to who knows where. About, a train about, full of corn. About four semi-truck trailers fit in each one of these cars. tractors just like ours running around here today. Hope our tire's still back there. Good news. Hey, there it is. <laughs> I love this pickup so much. It's so cool. Don't get squished now. I'm trying not to. You dropped it. <sighs> It'd be a lot easier if I was taller. I Job done. Looks good. Now it's time to get this pivot started. Grant, you want to walk us through how we do that? Well, so right now we need to move this pivot so we can cultivate it, but we don't want to put water on because it'll make it all muddy and then we can't cultivate. So we're going to divert the water to the underground irrigation. So on the other side over there by that tree, there's underground irrigation which we need to flush it and check it for leaks. So while we're moving the pivot, we're gonna use the water to do all that. We have to change these valves. This is turning the pivot, the water to pivot off. And this 
this will turn the water to the underground on. It's like switching train tracks for a train, but for water. Here is the flush out for the underground. And I think water's coming, I can hear it. Hope I don't get wet standing over here. There we go. Anything that accumulated in the underground pipe since the last time it was run can all be flushed out. Whew, that water is cold. And that new tire rolls just fine. It's nice and warm today. Good day to get wet, huh? I'm trying to figure out my, my angle of approach here. I'm thinking, thinking this way. Well, here, just do it. <laughs> one down many to go you can see the other one from here at least it's hot outside You sure it was the right one? Yep. Hey, nice work. Uh, you look dry. I get a little bit wet. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. One more. The pivot has been moving all day now. So it started out going this way, went all the way around, and it's over there. I just wanted to chat with you guys for a little bit um, because we worked with two different types of irrigation today. The pivot over there, and then also the underground irrigation. And it's really interesting because there's pros and cons to both. And Grant and I were discussing trying to figure out which one is better. And so I thought we would maybe give you guys the pros and cons and then you guys could help us decide. So we'll start with the pivot. It's above ground, meaning that anything that's broken, like the flat tires, the gearboxes, 
nozzles that are clogged, etc. Things like that are easily accessible. And you can see when they're wrong because the pivot is just right there in front of you. But then there's one of the cons. It breaks a lot. There's a lot of moving parts, the tires, the gearboxes, the nozzles, etc. They break down quite often. As you've seen from my videos, all the different fixes that we've had to do on pivots over the years and we'll have to continue doing. They are also made out of metal and metal and water, I don't know if you, you know, when you put those two things together, they rust. So they are definitely do not last forever. Um, and they're also expensive. So you're either paying a lot of money to have three phase electricity buried out, and then you can run the pivot with electricity, or you're paying for uh, some other source of fuel like natural gas or diesel to run an engine to pump water and power the pivot. So. It's pretty expensive that way. The other thing with the pivot is that it moves in a circle. So even with all the money and time you put into it, you cannot water every single acre with a pivot. Even when it has the corner arm on it, like you can do your best to get most of the field, but there are still going to be some dry spots. Um, then we move over to drip irrigation or underground irrigation. With that, you can get every acre. It's underground, so you never have to worry about moving a pivot. You can complete any kind of field operation whenever you want without having to worry about that big metal thing that's in the way. Um, there's no tires, so you're never gonna have any flat tires on it, but do you know what's underground? Gophers. Gophers and other burrowing animals are underground, and they think that underground irrigation is quite tasty, and so they will eat holes right through it. And, it's really hard to see those holes because the water is coming from the ground up, especially when the corn is tall. You'd need some kind of like drone or something to see if there was a break in the irrigation tape. That's why we have to run it um, pre-season to see if there's any holes anywhere and try to fix them. And when you do go in to fix them, you can't just, oh, look, there's the tire. Let's fix it. You have to dig it up and repair it. And that can be really tricky. It's also expensive to install, but not quite as expensive as a pivot. And you still do need some sort of water source and a way to pump that water through the drip tape. The drip tape waters from the ground up. You know, water can seep up like this. You're not losing anything to evaporation, but the nice thing about pivots is that it waters from up down. So if you need to water in some kind of like uh, chemical or fertilizer to get it to the roots of your plants, you kind of need a pivot to do that, but you do lose some water to evaporation. So I don't know, you guys take that information with what you will. What do you guys think is better? It is an absolutely beautiful evening out here in the cornfield. Look at how green the corn is. So this is a perfect example of a place that the pivot cannot get to. The pivot does not water this. So we have underground irrigation that waters this whole part of the field. But this is a perfect example of like a flat tire on underground irrigation. There's a hole in it somewhere along right here. It's not a very big hole. It's a pretty small leak. It's just like some standing water here. And so we don't have to fix it, but if it gets any worse, we will have to dig this up, find where it's broken and then replace part of the line. But right now, since there's not like water gushing out, flowing, causing erosion problems like that, the corn is gonna use all this water because it's still really, really dry around here. So it's not that big of a problem yet, but this is what a hole in underground irrigation pipe, the result of it. So we might have found where it's coming up. See that? Looks like a oh. spring, a little bubble. That corn plant is gonna be well watered. Just bubbling up like that. So underground is probably, I don't know, 10 inches, 10, 12 inches deep. So the corn can't actually use the water until it's about this size when the roots can get down there. So what's nice about a pivot is you can put water over the top and here you have to wait until the corn is big enough to actually use the water. And so then you get a spot like this. You can see the pivot just gets this part over here with the end gun and here it has not been watered at all this year. There's a, quite a big difference from this to this corn. A lot bigger, a lot fuller.
And look at the sunset. It's so beautiful out here. Another thing I forgot to mention about a pivot, the nice thing about a pivot, is that you can go and water stuff right away after you plant it. And that can help with some crusting issues. So I'm looking right here. I think if these plants here would have gotten some water on them right away, there would be some better emergence. Right, in see, right here, exactly. Like you can yeah. see like the corn, like it's coming up, but it's just so small because it just needed a little bit of water on top to help it, it out. It needed like a one last little push. And this year it's back. especially noticeable because we didn't get any rain. Like it is, it's rained a little bit around here, but not very much. It is so dry out here. I will say I am so incredibly grateful for the enormous underground lake that we have right beneath our feet, a couple hundred feet or so, the Oglala Aquifer, and that we even get the choice between a pivot and underground irrigation. There's a lot of farmers who have no sort of irrigation resource. So while they are a pain, there's pros and cons of both, I am super grateful that we have water that we're able to irrigate our crops with. I am also very thankful for my grandpa who put all of this stuff in. He put this in in probably the mid 90s and this is Grandpa Don who passed away last harvest. So this is one of his little mini projects that he really liked. So I want to keep it going as long as possible because he put a lot of work and effort into it and he really enjoyed this little patch of corn. On this video I did want to mention that Grant and I are selling t-shirts once again it's been long awaited long requested and so I've been working for a long time on these designs along with bunker branding and they are now available for purchase this is just one example it's brown it's got the Lore Farms logo it's got Grant and I's farmstead on the back of it with my name there's a couple other colors and designs and you can check them out on the link in the description of this video or there should just be the t-shirts below the video that you can just click on and purchase straight from there. So thank you for watching today's video. I'd love to hear your thoughts about irrigation and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!